Okay, I guess I am starting over. Welcome to Chatelaine Makes. I am Lorraine. Um, I had a video and I paused it to go and get something. And I just happened to look up at my screen and it was on zeros and not recording anymore. So I have no idea what happened with that. So I will just start over and then upload this to YouTube. So I started off, well, I'll start where I ended. I did a couple of test patterns. The last test pattern that I did was for Charlene from Charlene's Crochet Corner. She designed a vest for her granddaughter named Kelsey. And here is a picture of Kelsey modeling the vest. She added uh, fringe to the bottom of her vest. I did not. This is a picture of mine, which I will show you in a second. I will link Charlene's channel in the description box and you can go and check out where she talks about that vest. So I used uh, lace weight yarn for mine, a number fine number one. Make sure I get this the right way. In a burgundy and a chocolate brown. I trimmed it up. I did add trim to the around the armholes and then all around the neck, down the front and on the bottom. So it is a two week, two row repeat. I'll try to get that in there so you can see. There are no buttons on this. It is just sits open. The tops turn, turn over. So that is that. The other pattern that I tested was a knit pattern for uh, from for Jill from Fiber Floozy Crafts. This is her latest hat pattern. I cannot remember the correct name of the hat, so I'm not going to say it, but I will put it in the description box below along with a link to her channel. And this is the pattern. These are paw prints along with dogs. This is done with uh, sock yarn uh, wool from Michaels. Um, so Jill made her hat from yarn, out of yarn from Paw Ply Yarn Company. And she talks about that in her video, so I will link her channel below. She has released that pattern, so that is why I am showing it. And I did, I had done quite some time ago, I had made a couple of sweater slash coat, a sweater slash jacket for my parents. Um, they are both knitted patterns, and I cannot remember which pattern I used. Mind you, a lot of patterns that I do, I do um, alter them slightly. So uh, they lo no longer fit, um, as my parents had lost quite a bit of weight, and I did make them a little bit oversized. I did a d hooded zippered jacket or sweater for my father in navy blue and light blue. So here's the navy one and this is the light blue that I used. This is, this is just acrylic yarn. Okay, I'm gonna stand up and see if I can show this a little better. So the pattern 
that I used is what you see here in the light. It's continued all the way through. The same with the hood is the same. And after I was finished, I sewn on a, a heavy acrylic zipper. I do not remember which, which patterns I used. And my mother's, we like to have our sweaters a little long so that it's at least hip length if not cover our tush. This one here I did add I'm on the wrong side here I did add some mother of pearl buttons with the uh, split ring and I'm not sure how well this will show up. Hopefully that shows. There's a button here. There's one here and there is one here. Okay. This here is really long. I'm trying to get it so that you can see there is a pattern to this. So just quite nice um, texture pattern throughout and a lot on, as well as on the sleeves. You may need to zoom in to see the, pat the textured pattern a little better on both of these. Okay. That's it for finished objects. I do have my second top that I am making for my crochet along that I am doing with Gina from Knitting Turnpike and Barb from Naughty Yarnies, uh, both the links uh, for their channels will be down below as well as for Charlene's Crochet Corner and Jill from Fiber Floozy Crafts. So I haven't got much done on this because I was trying to um, get that uh, vest done for Charlene because she did need to have her pattern um, out to um, where it was going. It is going to be a published um, pattern. And uh, so I did have to get that all sorted for her uh, finished. And that's where I have been a little lax on my second tank. So I did add the plain black yarn at the shoulders. I do plan on using that for the trim around for the neck and the trim around the armholes. The bottom part of the top, I did use the Hag Stitch by uh, Hag Stitch Ryan, and I will also put a link to that in the description box. I did single crochets up at the top part so that it wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be able to see my bra through the top. Okay, there will be a link to our crochet along, along with the hashtags, the hashtag for that in the description box as well. And um, I am also participating in a make along uh, hosted by Bev from Dittmar Knittery with the hashtag make a bag make the bag hashtag how I felt. I did remember I used, I did hand dye some wool with Kool-Aid. This is my second hank that I will probably more than likely have start into this one. And 
this is how much I have left on this. I have just started the decreases on this. My bag, now I did make my bag a lot larger than what her pattern calls for in her tutorials because I plan on using this as a project bag. So as you can see, a lot of the pink turned up. There are a little bit of green spots throughout this hank that I did. And my plan is to felt this. So of course it will shrink in length about a third ish and in the width uh, not quite approximately somewhere around a quarter of the width so like I said I do have this is quite wide um, and quite long because I do plan on using it when once it's finished as a project bag and that is all my current whips active whips that I have um, in working on right now the other thing is that i do want to mention that people have been content providers have been putting videos out asking about where their subscriber numbers have gone and um, mentioning also too that some of the comments for the hashtag christmas in july's christmas in july fairies 21 have disappeared to now the, the rumor is that YouTube has considered a lot of these comments that have been made as spam meaning that they were copied and pasted into the comment sections I can tell you that I honestly have never copied and pasted anyone's comment and put it as my own however that being said i have noticed that a few of my comments so far and i'm not finished going through all the videos that i did make comments on have been removed so if you have entered any of these videos for christmas and july fairies this year and are thinking well I didn't copy and paste, so my comment's still there. I urge you, go and check if you still want, if you, if you want to make sure that your names, that your name is still on the videos that you entered so that you could be a possible semi-finalist in order to um, get into the draw for the grand prize winner. Um, go and check to see if your, if your comment's still there. Also check to see if you're still still subscribed because um, with YouTube considering the comments as spam and removing them um, they've also deleted um, unsubscribed you to those channels I have found that a couple of channels that I checked I was unsubscribed to but my comment was still there and I found that other um, videos that I was still subscribed but my comments were my comment was removed so like I said I have never ever copied and pasted in a, on any video in YouTube video or any other other thing as a comment making it it say for my comment I don't even know how to copy and paste on on my phone I do my comments on my phone. Um, I make my videos on my phone and on my laptop. I recently learned how to copy and paste on my laptop for um, putting information in, in the description boxes on my videos. So, like I said, I've never copy and pasted, yet YouTube has removed my comments. So, just letting you letting letting you know that it could be your comment that could be removed even though you did not copy and paste some comments perhaps that were copied and pasted may still be on there i don't know i don't know who copies and pastes but i 
the only thing that I know for sure is that I did not copy and paste my comments, yet some of them had been removed. So check that out. Um, so because when you enter the Christmas in July fairies, your goal is, and your hopes are that you make it into the grand prize drawing and that your name is picked from any of the fairy uh, videos. I plan this year is my second year in participating as a contestant in Christmas in July fairies. I plan on um, participating as a fairy next year. Um, unless things change drastically, drastically, that is my plan. But for this year, I decided I wanted to be a, a participant again and maybe I'll get lucky. And it's fun checking out and watching the videos that um, the fairies are putting out there. So the uh, the links and to the channels and videos um, will be in my description box. Um, if you like um, my videos and uh, please comment, um, hit the thumbs up button. It does help me get my videos out there to people that, um, to other people that don't know uh, what my content is. And uh, I am still trying to grow my channel. Um, last year, I know a lot of uh, content providers were fairies to help with their subscriptions or their subscription numbers. And uh, after the per, uh, contest was finished, they had lost a whole lot of uh, subscribers. I didn't want that to happen to me to this year. That's why I decided I'm going to be a participant again this year. And then next year, I will be one of the fairies. Um, it's disappointing to the content provider to see the numbers go up and then see them drop. Um, so I'm urging people um, for my video next year that um, if they are interested in what my content will be, that I provide and they're interested in watching to subscribe to my channel. Um, and I would like subscribers to be there for me uh, to see what I am doing with my crafts. Um, so I knit, I crochet, and I dye yarn, hand dye yarn. I have also done embroidery, cross stitch, have not gotten into <clears throat> diamond painting as some people have. Um, to me, I I really can't afford to put money out there for another craft. Um, a lot of them are expensive and I would rather spend my money on purchasing yarn and supplies so that I can do my amigurumi or garments or accessories, uh, table runners, tablecloths, blankets, that type of thing. So I'm rambling on here now. Uh, if you like my my content, please hit the like button. Um, subscri subscribe to my channel if you are not already, but I urge you subscribe if you're interested. If you think that someone that you know might be interested in my contact, uh, content that I provide, <clears throat> please share out my video. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I am here to uh, inspire others to do fiber, fiber crafts like I do. Um, if I can help you out, then I will try to do that as well. Um, I like watching other people's channels for inspiration and ideas, <coughs> excuse me, to see what I can do with what I, what supplies I have. I have lots. 
But if you're into yarn crafts and fiber arts, you know that even though you have lots on hand, sometimes you still buy more. I try to use up what I have in my stash. I consider this back here my retirement stash. I am no longer working, so I cannot buy the yarns like I used to. So, like, you know, and I mean, people don't think about that while they're working until they're getting close to that age or time of their life when they can or need to retire. I retired a little early because for health reasons and I am so much happier that I did retire and that I had built up a stash to use. My stash is nowhere near what my friend has. My friend does not have a YouTube channel. She does, however, have a small business doing her yarn crafts and she also does sewing. So now you know about me or some about me. I urge you, if you are on the fence about thinking about doing a fiber craft, check out my videos, check out some of the other videos that are out there. There are lots of content, content providers um, that show people their makes, show you how they made them, uh, some of their planning on what they do plan on making and possibly the reasons why. I started doing my crafts to help me relax, help me take my mind off of some of the things that I had been going through in my life. And I was lucky enough that I learned how to knit when I was a child. And I learned how to crochet when I was a young teenager. So I had that to fall back on and I didn't have to start where I didn't even have a clue on what yarn to buy, what hook or needle size to buy, what pattern to do, how to read a pattern. Um, so if you're on the fence, watch some of the YouTube videos, watch mine, watch some of the other ones. It doesn't have to be mine, but I urge you to watch before you decide whether you're going to, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, we may be able to help you decide that, hey, maybe I can do that. And you know what? You probably can. Uh, when I started my channel, before I started my channel, I was watching other people and I was watching all yarn um, content providers. I was sitting there thinking, boy, I could probably do that. But it took me a long time to decide, hey, yes, I can. And I had gotten some subscribers before I started putting content out. I believe I had about 15 or 17 subscribers just through participating through other people's lives, their live videos and chatting along. And then and I started my channel putting content out the 15th of January of this year. It has been slow on my numbers. My numbers have progressively gotten higher. I am over 170 subscribers and my subscribers are here for me. They're here to watch my content. They're not here for giveaways or for contests. Um, I do uh, do some giveaways. I haven't done very many. I do not promote my 
giveaways in my titles because I want to give back to the people who watch my channel and watch my videos. That's why most of my giveaways, and I say most because I believe I did promote one giveaway that I had. Other than that, I don't mention my video my in my video until towards the end of my video that yes, I am doing a giveaway. Because I want to give back to my subscribers who actually watch my videos. There are people out there who watch videos that have giveaway in the title. And that's all they do. They search YouTube for giveaways. I'm sorry, but I do not want you on my channel if that's what you're here for. I want you here because you want to be here for my content to see what I am knitting or crocheting or to watch my hand dyeing yarns. I learned how to hand dye over a Facebook message, messenger um, with someone that I barely knew and a crock pot and some Wilton's food color, food gel coloring. And then I went from there. I did more searches and, and inquiries um, when, and used Google a lot. Mind you, when you search Google, it doesn't tell you. A lot of times it doesn't tell you what you want to know. That's why I watched a lot of YouTube videos. And I grew. And I have started my own small business. I have not yet um, put my yarns out, my hand dyed yarns out for sale, but that will be coming. I make amigurumi and other items, both knit and crochet. Amigurumi is strictly crochet. I've done some knitted stuffed animals I don't like knitting stuffed animals. It takes too long. Knitting usually takes a lot longer to complete than a crocheted project. But, so I crochet my amigurumi. I do craft shows and sell that way. I will be having a website at some point hopefully in the near future. But until then, I am stuck at home or traveling a couple of hours, maybe three hours from where I live to do craft shows and craft sales and sell my wares or my makes. Hence, Chatelaine makes because I make things. I make a lot of things with yarn, but I didn't want to restrict myself strictly to yarn. That's why, or crocheting or knitting. Um, I did some cake decorating and I like doing crafts. I, I didn't want to limit myself to only that. So I decided Chatelaine is my maiden name. It is a French name. We are from Northern Ontario. My family, my, my, my family goes back to, I believe the 600 or the 700s or 500s or 600s, which is a very long time. Mind you, the name got shortened because there was at one point at the beginning, there was a DE in front of the Chatelaine and it was dropped. So I wanted to honor my family. My family has a lot of creative and talented people. I have a lot of talented relatives. So I come from a creative family. I wanted to honor my family. So 
when, like I said, I didn't want to just limit to crochet and knit and now hand dyeing yarn. So my daughter helped me with a business card. My business card says, I will read you the bottom of my business card. It says, hand dyed yarns and more made with love. And they are. When I crochet up an amigurumi that I plan on selling, I hope that the, the recipient of that loves what they received. There's love put in it. And hopefully they will love the, the amigurumi. When I knit, crochet, a gift for someone that I know, someone, my family, or a very close friend that I care very much for. There is a lot of love put in that, that item. A lot of people, they don't understand that. Sure, it says it's made with love. How much love did they really make, did they put into that? There's a lot of time spent and a lot of love. It's like baking or cooking. You put your love of that cooking or baking into what you make. I do the same thing when I knit or crochet. I'd love to knit and crochet. I'd love hand dyeing yarn. I put my love into my projects, as many others do. So next time you see something that says that it was handmade with love, think about it. Think about the person who made it for you, if you know the person who made it. How do they feel about you? How do they really feel about you? If they've made you a gift that was handmade, they love and care for you a lot. So I think at this point I'm getting too emotional. I am going to sign off. And those of you who are still here, please check my description box. Leave me a comment. I love Re, uh, reading the comments and I try to respond and reply to the comments. If I don't know what to say at that time, I will give it a heart. Which when you read your email says that they loved your comment. Well, I love all the comments. I just didn't know what to say at that time to put in a proper reply to your comment. So check my description box, like if you do, return please if you like my comment or my content, uh, share it out, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't like the video, You know, you don't necessarily have to put a thumbs down. You don't have to comment. You don't have to put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can turn the comment the video off if you if you don't like it. YouTube takes all of our comments, our likes, dislikes our watches where the how long they, we that somebody's watched one of our videos, they all take that into consideration and come up with a system. YouTube decides whether to suggest your videos using those things. How many people watched it and how long did they watch your video for? Did you retain 
the person's interest. I know some of the some of the videos, they're not that interesting. Some of the some of the videos are more interesting than others. YouTube takes that all into consideration whether they're going to suggest your video to someone who does not know about your channel. We can only increase our subscribers and the people who watch our videos through shares or suggestions from YouTube. So somebody shares a video with you, thinks, hey, you might like this. You might be interested in what this person has to say or what they're doing. Otherwise, people out there, they don't even know we exist. We are hoping that we can draw your attention and keep your interest in our videos that so that you keep coming back. I did not mention I also crochet with beads and I make necklaces. I will show you some of the necklaces on another video. And I have upcoming videos. I know I have the live on the 21st. And I know it's not on my channel. It is either on Gina, the Knitting Turnpike, or Barb, Naughty Yarnies. I will verify whose video it is and put the that information in the description box as well. And any other thing that I mentioned, I will put in the description box, whether it be a link to the person's channel or a link to the person's video. And so until I see you next time, this is Lorraine from Shadowline Makes signing off.